a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Frida Kahlo Frida Kahlo de Rivera was a Mexican artist who painted many portraits, self-portraits, and works inspired by the nature and artifacts of Mexico. Inspired by the country's popular culture, she employed a naive folk art style to explore questions of identity, post-colonialism, gender, class, and race in Mexican society. Her paintings often had strong autobiographical elements and mixed realism with fantasy. In addition to belonging to the post-revolutionary Mexicaotl movement, which sought to define a Mexican identity, Carlo has been described as a surrealist or magical realist. Carlo's work has been celebrated internationally as emblematic of Mexican national and indigenous traditions, and by feminists, for what is seen as its uncompromising depiction of the female experience and form. Born to a German father and a mestiza mother, Carlo spent most of her childhood and adult life at her family home in Coyoracan, Louisiana Casa Azul, now known and publicly accessible as the Frida Kahlo Museum. She was left disabled by polio as a child, and, at the age of 18 was seriously injured in a traffic accident which caused her pain and medical problems for the rest of her life. Prior to the accident, she had been a promising student headed for medical school but in its aftermath and long recovery she had to abandon higher education, and although art had been Carlo's hobby throughout her childhood, she began to entertain the idea of becoming an artist. Carlo was also interested in politics, and in 1927 joined the Mexican Communist Party. Through the party she met the celebrated muralist Diego Rivera. They were married in 1928, and remained a couple until Carlo's death. The relationship was volatile due to both having extramarital affairs, and while they divorced in 1939, they remarried the following year. Carlo spent the late 1920s and early 1930s traveling in Mexico in the United States with Rivera, who was working on commissions. During this time she developed her own style as an artist, and drew her main inspiration from Mexican folk culture. She began painting, and painted mostly small self-portraits which mixed elements from pre-Columbian and Catholic mythology. Although always overshadowed by Rivera, her paintings raised the interest of surrealist artist André Breton, who arranged for Carlo to have her first solo exhibition at the Julian Levy Gallery in New York in 1938. The exhibition was a success, and was followed by another in Paris in 1939. While the French exhibition was less successful, the Louvre purchased a painting from Carlo, the frame, making her the first Mexican artist to be featured in their collection. Throughout the 1940s, Carlo continued to participate in exhibitions in Mexico and the United States. She also began to teach at the Escuela Nacional de Pintura, Escultura y Grabado Louisiana Esmeralda, and became a founding member of the Seminario de Cultura Mexicana. Carlo's always fragile health began to increasingly decline in the same decade. She had her first solo exhibition in Mexico in 1953, shortly before her death in 1954 at the age of 47. Carlo was mainly known as Rivera's wife until the late 1970s, when her work was rediscovered by art historians and political activists. By the 1990s, she had become not only a recognized figure in art history, but also regarded as an icon for Chicanos, feminists, and the LGBTQ movement. 1907 1924, Family and Childhood Magdalena Carmen Frida Carlo Y. Calderon was born on July 6, 1907 in Coyoracan, a village on the outskirts of Mexico City. Carlo stated that she was born at the family home, La Casa Azul, but according to the official birth registry, the birth took place at the nearby home of her maternal grandmother. Carlo's parents were photographer Guillermo Carlo and Matilde Calderon Y. Gonzalez. Originally, from Germany, Guillermo had emigrated to Mexico in 1891, after epilepsy caused by an accident ended his university studies. Although Carlo claimed that her father was Jewish, he was in fact a Lutheran. Matilde was born in Oaxaca to an indigenous father, and a mother of Spanish descent. In addition to Carlo, the marriage produced daughters Matilde, Adriana, and Cristina. She also had two half-sisters from Guillermo's first marriage, Maria Luisa and Margarita but they were raised in a convent. Carlo later described the atmosphere in her childhood home as often, very, very sad. Both parents were often sick, and their marriage was devoid of love. 
Matilda's relationships with her daughters were also extremely tense. Carlo described her mother as, kind, active and intelligent, but also calculating, cruel and fanatically religious. Furthermore, Guillermo's photography business suffered greatly during the Mexican Revolution, as the overthrown government had commissioned works from him, and the long civil war limited the number of private clients. When Carlo was six years old she contracted polio, which made her right leg shorter and thinner than the left. The illness forced her to be isolated from her peers for months, and she was bullied while the experience made her introverted. It also made her Guillermo's favorite due to their shared experience of living with disability. Carlo credited him for making her childhood marvelous. He was an immense example to me of tenderness, of work, and above all in understanding. For all my problems, he taught her about literature, nature, and philosophy, and encouraged her to play sports to regain her strength. Despite the fact that most physical exercise was seen as unsuitable for girls, he also taught her photography, and she began helping him retouch, develop, and color photographs. Due to polio, Carlo began school later than her peers. Along with her younger sister Christina, she, at first attended the local kindergarten and primary school in Coyoracan, and was homeschooled for the fifth and sixth grades, while Christina then followed their sisters into a convent school. Carlo was enrolled in a German school due to their father's wishes, she was soon expelled for disobedience, and was sent to a vocational teacher's school. Her stay at the school was brief, as she was sexually abused by a female teacher. In 1922, Carlo was accepted to the elite national preparatory school. The institution had only recently begun admitting women, with only 35 girls out of 2,000 students. Carlo focused on natural sciences with the aim of becoming a doctor. She performed well academically, was a voracious reader, and became deeply immersed and seriously committed to Mexican culture, political activism and issues of social justice. The school promoted indigenismo, a new sense of Mexican identity that took pride in the country's indigenous heritage and sought to rid itself of the colonial mindset of Europe as superior to Mexico. Particularly influential to Carlo at this time were nine of her schoolmates, with whom she formed an informal group called the Cachuchas. Many of them would become leading figures of the Mexican intellectual elite. They were rebellious and against everything conservative, and pulled pranks, staged plays, and debated philosophy and Russian classics to mask the fact that she was older and to declare herself a daughter of the revolution. She began saying that she had been born on July 7, 1910, the year the Mexican Revolution began, which she would continue throughout her life. Carlo enjoyed art from an early age, receiving drawing instruction from her father's friend, printmaker Fernando Fernandez and filling notebooks with sketches. In 1925, she began to work alongside school to help her family. After briefly working as a stenographer, she became a paid engraving apprentice for Fernandez. He was impressed by her talent, although she did not consider art as a career at this time. 1925-1930, Bus Accident, First Paintings, and Marriage to Diego Rivera On September 17, 1925, Carlo and her boyfriend and fellow Cachucha, Alejandro Gomez Arias, were on their way home from school, when the wooden bus they were riding collided with a streetcar. Several people were killed and Carlo suffered nearly fatal injuries, an iron hand rail impaled her through her pelvis, fracturing the bone. She also fractured several ribs, her legs, and her collarbone. She spent a month in the hospital and two months recovering at home, before being able to return to work. As she continued to experience fatigue and back pain, her doctors ordered X-rays, which revealed that the accident had also displaced three vertebrae. Her treatment included wearing a plaster corset, which confined her to bed rest, for part of the three months she spent unable to walk. The accident ended Carlo's dreams of becoming a doctor and caused her pain and illness for the rest of her life. Her friend Andres Enesdrosa stated that Carlo lived dying. During her recovery, she started to consider a career as a medical illustrator, which would combine her interests in science and art, and began to paint. She had a specially made easel that enabled her to paint in bed, and a mirror was placed above it so she could see herself. Painting became a way for Carlo to explore questions of identity and existence, and she later stated that the accident and the isolating recovery period made her desire to begin again. 
painting things just as I saw them with my own eyes and nothing more. Most of the paintings Carlo made during this time were portraits of herself, her sisters, and school friends. Her early paintings and correspondence show that she drew inspiration especially from European artists, in particular Renaissance masters such as Sandro Botticelli and Bronzino and avant-garde movements such as Neues H. Lichkeet and Cubism. Carlo's bedrist was over by late 1927, and she began socializing with her old school friends, who were now at university and involved in student politics. She joined the Mexican Communist Party and was introduced to a circle of political activists and artists, including the exiled Cuban communist Julio Antonio Mella, and the Italian-American photographer Tino Modotti. At one of Modotti's parties in June 1928, Carlo was introduced to Diego Rivera, one of Mexico's most successful artists and a notable figure in peace. They had met briefly in 1922, when he was painting a mural at her school. Shortly after their introduction in 1928, Carlo asked him to judge whether her paintings showed enough talent for her to pursue a career as an artist. Rivera recalled being impressed by her works, stating that they showed an unusual energy of expression, precise delineation of character, and true severity. They had a fundamental plastic honesty and an artistic personality of their own. It was obvious to me that this girl was an authentic artist. Carlo soon began a relationship with Rivera, despite his being 42 years old, having had two common-law wives, and being a self-confessed womanizer. He was considered attractive by women as he at least outwardly refrained from the macho act according to which women were inferior to and owned by men that was a central part of Mexican masculinity. Carlo and Rivera were married in a civil ceremony at the town hall of Goyracan on August 21, 1929. Her mother was against the marriage, and both parents referred to it as a marriage between an elephant and a dove, referring to the couple's differences in size. Rivera was tall and overweight while Carlo was petite and fragile. Regardless, her father approved as Rivera was wealthy and therefore able to support Carlo, who could not work and had to receive expensive medical treatment. The wedding was reported by the Mexican and international press and the marriage would be subject to constant media attention in Mexico in the coming years, with articles referring to the couple as simply, Diego, and Frida. Soon after the marriage, in late 1929, Carlo and Rivera moved to Cuernavaca in the rural state of Morelos, where he was commissioned by American ambassador Dwight W. Morrow to paint murals for the Palace of Cortes. Around the same time, she resigned her membership of the peace in support of Rivera, who had been expelled shortly before the marriage, for his support of the leftist opposite movement within the Third International. During the Civil War, Morelos had seen some of the heaviest fighting, and living in the Spanish-style Cuernavaca sharpened Carlo's sense of a Mexican identity and history. She changed her artistic style, beginning to draw inspiration increasingly from Mexican folk art. Art historian Andrea Kettenman states that she may have been influenced by Adolfo Best Morgard's treatise on the subject, as she incorporated many of the characteristics outlined by him, for example the lack of perspective, and the combining of elements from pre-Columbian and colonial periods of Mexican art. Similarly to many other Mexican women artists and intellectuals at the time, Carlo also began wearing traditional indigenous Mexican peasant clothing to emphasize her mestizo ancestry, long and colorful skirts, hypals, and rebozos, elaborate headdresses and masses of jewelry. She especially favored the dress of women, from the allegedly matriarchal society of the Isthmus of Tuantepec, who had come to represent an authentic and indigenous Mexican cultural heritage in post-revolutionary Mexico. The Tuana outfit allowed Carlo to express her feminist and anti-colonialist ideals, hid her damaged body, and appealed to Rivera, who believed that Mexican women who do not wear Mexican clothing are mentally and emotionally dependent on a foreign class to which they wish to belong. Her identification with La Raza, the people of Mexico, and her profound interest in its culture were to remain important facets of her art throughout the rest of her life. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?